The following video depicts a pediatric cardiac arrest. A highly qualified team of healthcare professionals demonstrate the various roles, when executed correctly, can give the patient their best chance for survival. You will learn the purpose for each role and the current algorithm for cardiac arrest in a pediatric patient. Hey, Johnny. Johnny? Johnny, hey, are you okay? He's not breathing. Call the code pink. Code pink. Code pink, room 3308. The person who discovers the unresponsive patient immediately begins basic life support, establishing unresponsiveness, checking for breathing and a pulse, activating the emergency response system or code button in the patient's room, and beginning chest compressions. She will continue compressions and ventilations at a 30 to 2 ratio until relief arrives. going on? I came in to check on him. He was unresponsive, no breathing, no pulse, so I started CPR immediately. I got ventilations. Okay. I'll take over compressions. Thank you. I'll record. I've got the monitor. I'll on. start an IV. Okay. Successful resuscitation requires a team approach, consisting of several roles that team members are either assigned to or assume on their own. These roles include a team leader, compressor, ventilator, monitor nurse, medication nurse, and recorder. Some of these roles may be combined depending on staff availability. The team leader does just that, leads the team through established algorithms to treat the patient. She will assign roles to the team if not already assumed. She prepares the team for the next steps in the treatment protocol. The team leader is usually a physician, but can be any qualified person certified in advanced life support. I'll be the team leader. Here's back board. All right. The person giving ventilations, usually a respiratory therapist, will maintain the patient's airway and work with the person giving compressions to ensure effective CPR. As a team, the two will deliver 15 compressions to two ventilations. It is critical that the compressor be relieved as needed to prevent fatigue. Got pads. Roll over. Back. Okay. Do your compressions. Start the monitor. All right, we've got V-fib on the monitor. Jessica, will you charge to two joules per kilogram, please? Does anybody know how much he weighs? Charging to two Go joules ahead. per kilogram. Um, 20 kilograms. 20, so total 40? That's right. Charging to 40. 18 gauge started in the right AC and blood's on the way to the lab. Okay, good. I'll, I'll check the blood sugar on that as well. Mm -hmm. I'll get a blood sugar. Charging to 40. Everyone clear, stand clear. The monitor nurse is responsible for applying monitor pads, interpreting the rhythm, and performing defibrillation if needed. Shock delivered. Continue compressions. Morgan, will you draw up? Uh, epinephrine after that blood sugar. Mm -hmm. We're going to need 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram, so that will be 0.2 milligrams. Zero and just hold that. The medication nurse will ensure IV access, preparing and administering medications, and drawing blood for labs and glucose checks. Blood sugar is 100. Two. Tiffany, will you let me know when it's been two minutes from the time we shocked? The recorder documents all actions. It is vital that the time of each treatment is recorded accurately. The recorder also keeps time of the code event and alerts the team leader every two minutes. The advanced life support algorithm for cardiac arrest is centered around two minute intervals. Leslie, how's your ventilations? Uh, air's going in well, um, got bilateral chest rise. Okay, do it again. All right. 
We've got bilateral breath sounds. 0.2 milligrams of epi is ready. Okay. Does anybody know what this uh, child came in with? I know he has a history of asthma. Okay. With any patient, no matter what age, there is an underlying cause for cardiac arrest. One way to remember possible causes is H's and T's. They include hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ions or acidosis, hypo or hyperkalemia, hypothermia, toxins, cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, and thrombosis. The team must consider each of these underlying causes and correct them in order for the patient to survive. We've got good breath sounds bilaterally. She's bagging well. All right. What was that blood sugar? 100. 100. Okay, good. In two minutes, then shot. Two minutes. All right, let's hold compressions and reanalyze. We're still in V-fib. Continue compressions. Will you charge to four joules per kilogram? Charging to four, 20, charging to 80, sorry, 80, 80 joules. joules. Okay, good job. Is charging. Everybody clear, stand clear. Clear. Delivering shock. Continue compressions. Give the epinephrine, please. At the end of two minutes, we'll go up to six joules per kilogram. Epi's in. Morgan, will you draw up amiodarone? We'll need five milligrams per kilogram, so that will be 100 milligrams, please. 100 milligrams of amiodarone being drawn up. And just hold it. Let's go ahead and hang normal saline so we can um, treat hypovolemia if that's the problem. Has anybody talked to the family? Did we know if the, the patient got into any medications or anything like that? Tiffany, will you go talk to the family? I will. Or send someone, the supervisor? All right. It is important to keep the family informed of the patient's condition. A member of the health care team, usually a house supervisor, should stay with the family. It is encouraged to allow the family to observe, at a distance, the resuscitation efforts. <clears throat> All right, let's hold compressions. We're still in V-fib. Continue compressions. Jessica, go ahead and charge at six joules per kilogram. That'll be 120 joules. Charging to 120. Mm -hmm. Normal saline is running. Okay. Charging, everyone clear, stand clear. Shock delivered. Continue compressions. All right, let's hold for just a second. We've got an organized rhythm. Check a pulse, Adam. He's got a pulse. Good. How's his respiration? Okay, he's got shallow respiration, so I'm gonna continue to bag a little bit. Sounds good. Monitor Let's get a show blood pressure. sinus tachycardia. It's about 106 right now. Good. Let's get a blood pressure. Will you call pharmacy and see if they can mix the amiodarone drip? Call Will you call for ICU the and see if they have a bed we'll need to transfer him? I'll call ICU. See if Tiffany is talking to the family. They can come in and visit in a few minutes. He's 100 over 70. All right, that sounds good. Pharmacy is mixing the amiodarone drip. Okay. I see he's ready for us. Okay. All right. He's breathing on his own. Okay. Johnny? All right, he's starting to arouse some. Let's go ahead and pack him up and get him ready to go to ICU. Can y'all think of anything else that we need to do for right now? Good job, team. Did great. Responding to a pediatric code can be scary. Working as a team and knowing your role can make all the difference in the outcome. We hope this video will help you to see how following established algorithms, practicing good communication skills, and working as an effective team will help save a life.